There are noted limitations when it comes to a purely GPS-based solution. Uh, as mentioned, um, indoors will impose a problem. Uh, the signal will more than likely not get through the roof. Um, you can have dense city multipath issues. Um, as mentioned, the urban canyon uh, problem with Chicago and New York, um, as well as a, you know, a truck or a vehicle almost acts as a Faraday cage um, when you have your uh, devices in there in terms of GPS. You can still get cellular connectivity, but you're more than likely not going to get GPS, uh, any sort of GPS reception. So how do we design when GPS is not possible? GPS signals are also very weak. We have to remember that this is an older technology from satellites that are coming from space. So typically, the signal that we receive on the ground is around minus 125 dBm. So it requires an extreme amount of sensitivity just to pick up the data. You can also have poor orientations with your antenna. Antennas will always have higher sensitivity and lower sensitivity lobes in terms of uh, where they are most sensitive to perception. And if they're in the wrong orientation or if they're you know, near a human body or uh, other um, other masses, that can affect the the, um, the tuning and sensitivity of your GPS antenna. Um, there's also GPS can consume power. There are definitely ways around it, um, but GPS in and of itself, as it stands, is a constrained. Uh, it, 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 it consumes a lot of power, and it can be difficult for constrained or low battery conditions, where you're likely going to prioritize your wireless connectivity and reduce your GPS usage. So. What do we do in a situation like that? As Mike and Chris had alluded to, LTE location is a great option. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see us, um, this is actually a screenshot from the NRF cloud to show that um, how it can map a uh, cell ID to a location in Vancouver. So in the center of that uh, circle is actually where the Misty West office is. And the accuracy of this will depend on the density of towers that are in and around uh, the location of your asset. So in a dense urban area, you're actually gonna get better um, accuracy in your location than a more sparse network, say out in the, the suburbs or farmlands. But the great thing about LTE location is it's essentially free. You're just sending the cell ID um, as a RESTful API to um, to the NRF cloud, or you can there are, there are other ways to do this as well. And you can get a pretty good coarse resolution um, uh, location, so around 800 meters or worse. Um, there's no sensitivity to orientation like GPS, and it's available as long as you have an LTE network. And so it's a great uh, it's a great way to first approach uh, getting location. Second, uh, BLE. I'm a BLE guy, so I try to throw BLE into every design I do. And I know that makes uh, some of the engineers here sick, but I talk about G BLE every day, and so I'm going to be talking about it right now. Um, BLE, uh, if, if it's available, BLE is a great way to go. You can connect to a mobile phone. All of our mobile phones right now in our pockets, uh, they have a location of where you are right now. And if you can do um, connectivity over BLE, you can leverage that. You can just use the phone's location. You can even use the phone's modem and update the cloud if there is the right app on that phone. So BLE is a great low power way of uh, switching off uh, some of the higher power operations on your asset tracker. It doesn't have to be a mobile phone. There are also BLE gateways. Uh, companies like Cisco uh, design uh, gateways for companies so that you can do um, indoor location of asset trackers. And it is a great way of being able to operate um, an asset tracker in indoor locations at extremely low power. Um, Wi-Fi. So, as I mentioned, all of our phones have our location, and I get, bet for 99.8% of us right now, they're getting that location based on Wi-Fi, not GPS. Um, Wi-Fi uh, for location works as you're scanning for nearby Wi-Fi um, public access points. You're capturing the SSID and uh, MAC address, and you're forwarding that to Google Geolocation Services for location. I mean, accuracy will vary between five, 10 meters, depending on the, um, the size or the strength of the uh, access point. But you can do this uh, at a very low power compared to a raw GPS scan. Um, if we're doing a Wi-Fi scan, let's say around 45% duty cycle, um, the current consumption during that scan is about 9.17 milliamps this is based on um, some standard uh, Wi-Fi radios. As mentioned, a GPS um, search is about 40 milliamps peak minimum. So as you can see, the average current during operation is about five times less. 
And considering a Wi-Fi scan can generally be done in about 10 seconds versus a cold GPS search, which can take minutes, um, the actual power consumption is orders of magnitude less.